everyone, and welcome to episode three of Bass Pro. Today we're going to be looking at mastering a dubstep track. Now, let me be clear. We're mastering for loudness and punchiness and not necessarily dynamic range or clarity. We will try and keep the track as clear as possible, but what we are going for is a commercial master. We want it to sound like something that you'd hear on Beatport or iTunes. We want it to sound uh, professional, which these days means we want it to sound loud. Um... That's not how I like to master things, but if you want your song to be heard by a lot of people, if you want it to be accepted and to stand up to other tracks, it's got to be as loud as other tracks because uh, it's just a fact that loud music sounds better than quiet music um, in 99% of instances. Uh, anyways, let's get started with mastering. So this is where we left off last time. Actually, no, it's not. I added some stuff. Um, we had this, I added a drum fill at the end of the verse. And then for the second one, I just chop, chopped up the drop a little bit. And that sounds like this. Hang on. One second. So I didn't actually add anything. I just uh, chopped up what we already had and moved some stuff around. That's all I did. Um, so yeah, all together, this is what we ha have unmastered. This is what it sounds like. And uh, something I'd actually like to do before we start mastering is I want to cut down the little, uh, not arpeggiator, but the little uh, melody that we have going there. So let me just solo that out. Did I grab it at the right part? No, I messed it up. It's okay. We have so many samples running rampant in this project that uh, it's snapping to those instead of snapping to the grid, which is really frustrating. It's probably a setting somewhere to change that, but it's okay. Uh, so that one, that one. And these two. And I'm just going to turn them down because they're a little bit louder than everything else because there's no sub bass under them. A little bit louder than that. Okay, so let's get to the mastering. Um, to master something like this, I'd usually bounce it out. So let's do that. Bounce project or selection. Now for a moment here, you're probably not going to be able to hear me because I have my voice running through Logic so that I could process it so that it sounds as clear as it does. Um, unfortunately, a side effect of that is some of the information going on is creating a little bit of reverb with my voice, but that that's okay. Uh, so I'm just going to export this as... Uh, ready for master tutorial drop. Okay, perfect. You can hear me again. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to save this, uh, save it as it was. And now we're going to delete all these tracks except for my voice, hopefully. And then when it gets to where there's automation, we're going to have to hit enter. Uh -huh. I lost my voice for a second there, but we got it back. 
Delete, 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 delete. We're just uh, freeing up all of the CPU. And now we're going to save this as Tutorial Drop Master. So now we've created a, a different project file, essentially. And the reason I did this instead of making just a new file is because I wanted to keep my uh, my voice here. I didn't want to have to make a new channel and set it all up because I got a lot of stuff uh, going on here, as you can see, to make my voice sound clear. Um, anyways, let's go grab what we just dumped out. Ready for mastering, tutorial drop, drag it in. Import tempo information, even though we already have it at the right tempo. Um, this is what we have. So yeah, that's that's what we want. Um, so right on this track, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do a little initial master. This is something I do. I don't think everyone does this the same way. This is the way I do it, and I think I do it pretty well because I've had a couple of people with really amazing songs come to me for mastering. Uh, so I usually start with uh, dynamic compression, which is basically just a multi-band compressor. We'll start in the high end, and we have to solo it and listen to it. And we're going to compress this part pretty high. So you want to put the, the rightmost slider somewhere kind of in the middle. This is your uh, th well, threshold slider. You want to put it right in the middle of all the lows and the highs, a little bit more towards the lows. Uh, I don't mean lows in frequency, I mean lows in volume. And then you're going to put your top right at the top of where the volume uh, goes highest. And then you're going to set this to like almost 10, very high. It's okay to compress this like crazy. We're trying to even out the sounds here. Basically, just listen for a change. And when it starts to sound distorted, you stop compressing. So that's totally fine. Let's move on to our highs here. I'm going to turn down my voice a little bit. That's a little bit better. Um, does it sound better if I put on the, the denoiser? I wonder if that sounds better. Uh, let's just try it. Um, anyways, back to here. Uh, this one we can compress pretty harsh, but not as harsh as the first one. So we'll set this to about four or five, somewhere in that range. Now we'll go to our low mids. And this one we want to compress really soft. We'll leave it around like two-ish. 1.8 is good. Because we want to avoid mud in that area. And now for our lowest frequencies, we can compress a lot. So I'm going to set this to like nine. Uh, and we're going to compress it quite a lot. Now if we listen to it with that bypassed and then turn it on, you should hear a difference. So we just t tightened it up a little bit so far. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, mid-side EQ. And this is just uh, basically... What it allows you to do is cut a lot of unnecessary frequencies basically from 100 up in order to uh, reserve volume space basically. So once you've done that, you can go into your mid and you want to solo it because you need your mid to sound good because that's what's going to play on club stereo systems. Now you listen to it and you want to boost the bass a little bit and boost the like high mids, but you got to make sure it still sounds good. I like to turn it down about halfway because I don't trust myself to be subtle enough. So by turning it down halfway, I know that I'm being subtle enough. Um, reverb, I find, really fills out the sound, but you got to do it right. I put the decay time to about 
Uh, we could honestly probably do like 90 milliseconds. Uh, let's do six milliseconds per delay. Let's actually turn the decay time down to like 50. And then this one all the way down to 25, 0.25. And this one can be up here at about 63. Put it on room. Put the wet mix right around there. And we want it to play frequencies between like, probably like uh, around 3,000 to like 6,000. And if we solo that, this is what we're adding to the mix right now. And it just fills it in. Listen, listen to this. One of those things that's very subtle and you can't really hear a difference, but it does make it louder. And again, I'm just going to turn down a little bit because I probably do it too much. Uh, harmonic exciter. Obviously, also, you don't need to check more of these than you need, but I have a pretty good formula for making uh, my dubs of songs pretty awesome. So anyways, we're just going to do minor uh, tape saturation. Just trying to bring up the volume a little bit every way we can. Don't do more than you need to, because you see I did this by 0.9, and it didn't quite bring up the volume as much as doing this one by 0.5 did. They're all different, and for every song it's going to be different, so you just want to raise the volume level relatively, relatively between them all, like the same amount, if you can. Except for the sub bass, you can kind of go nuts on the sub bass as long as it still sounds good. And then I like to turn that down. <laughs> uh, stereo imaging is a big part of making a good sound. I like the highs to be pushed almost completely, honestly. Sounds super good. Now the low mids. When I'm right about there. And now the high mids. You want them kind of to follow these two lines coming out in this software anyways. Uh, the low end. Almost totally mono. Now I'm not going to do any maximization yet because now I'm going to go to my master channel and I'm going to apply Fab Filters Pro Q2 and we're going to do some finalized editing. So here we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is a low cut at 90 successfuls per octave, Q of one, which it's already at. And uh, I'm, here. I'm gonna start back here. And I'm gonna sweep forward while the song is playing to make sure there's no information that I'm missing. So that's a good place to cut it. And I'll do the same with the high end, with a high cut. So all the information that's there behind that is just oversaturated shrill crappiness. So we're gonna cut that. Uh, and now we're just gonna make a band with a narrow cue, narrow-ish and scan through the sound for anything we want to boost or cut. Uh, just always a safe practice. I mean, before you send it into your ma master compression. So I'm going to boost right here at 164 hertz. Just a little bit. I'm going to make another one. And of course, we're going to go over all of our changes in the end to see what it sounds like. All 
boost right there too because I hear a lot of fundamental sounds in there. By the way, I'm boosting this by like a decibel, two decibels, so really, really subtle changes. Uh, let's get that fr freeze off there. So let's add a little bit at uh, 4,600. Kind of like this, just for some crackle. My bad, 6,800. And I'm actually going to add quite a bit of gain there. I'm just gonna throw an, a regular EQ on just so I can see the analyzer because that's what I started on. So I, I know what the analyzer looks like really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw another boost on there, just a bell, uh, with a higher Q up at these top high frequencies. Just want to have a little bit of a smile curve going. Um, that might be a little bit much though. Something kind of like that. And uh, now with this one, let's get it as close to zero decibels as we can. We're looking pretty darn close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this down one and have it uh, actually, no. This one's going to be before our second instance of ozone. Then we're going to have another one after it so we can see what we're doing to the sound. So here's an, a new fresh uh, shell of the VST. So there's no setting saved in this one. This is the second time we're applying it. And this is just so we can see what we're changing. Now on this one, all I'm going to use is the maximizer. Uh, on IRC3 compression ratio uh, algorithm, on intersample detection with a fast character and stereo linking at about halfway. We're gonna play the song and uh, turn down the fader until we have about six decibels of gain reduction. So our sub bass is right around where we want it, but I'm hearing a lot of sounds that are a little bit too shrill up here. So I'm actually just going to grab this bundle and bring it down. Okay, so now I'm gonna get rid of this last EQ because I like the way our curve looks. And you can hear my voice is so loud. You can even hear my breathing because, again, it is running through the master chain. Um, last but not least, in Logic Pro X, I throw on an adaptive limiter at like one and a half decibels of gain. Um, I don't know what algorithm's running through this thing, but it works really, really well. So we're just going to play that now. So I've turned that down to one, and then in ozone, I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit. Let's see what it sounds like with this all the way up, and then with it all the way down. It sounds way better down here. So I'm just gonna put it to like 5.5%. Okay, let's give that a little, 
One more listen. Okay, good to know that was all useless. That is perfect. Okay, awesome. No plugin. All right. Oh, it was not useless. Okay, then. Can I get that stuff back, please? So. There's my adaptive limiter. Where did I just stop off? How many minutes is that? 21 minutes. <laughs> so, as you can hear from the, uh, well, from the sound of it, uh, even though we did squash the dynamics quite a lot, because of the side chain, the kick and the snare are still standing out. Um, if there's any problems with this mix, I'd say it'd have to be that the highs are a little bit mangled, like they're all laying over top of each other. But, uh, you know, a mastering isn't something you can... Mixing is not something you can do in an hour. And maxing... Ma Jesus, I can't talk. Mastering is not something you can do in 20 minutes. Um... If I was going to release this song, I'd go back and mix it probably five or six times, to be honest. And then I'd kind of master it, th I don't know, two or three, honestly. Uh, but this is a tutorial, and I've taught you a lot of the really important principles behind mixing and mastering a bass-heavy song. And it's up to you to tweak them and make them good for your song. You know what I mean? Like I expect an answer or something. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so now what I would do is I'd bounce this out uh, because we're finished, obviously. Ready for master tutorial drop. Finito. Okay. And now I would just grab it, or I'm going to just grab it, bring it in. And now if we take off everything... Uh, we can see that we can easily see the difference between the two, like, like massive, massive difference. And then if I cut it in half, I'll play it and you can hear the difference between this one and this one. All right, let's, let's do this. So obviously the second half of that is way more in your face. And if that's what you're looking for, which if you're making dubstep, it probably is, then uh, yeah, haha, <laughs> that's perfect. Uh, so that's the end of this video. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Bass Pro, where we're either going to cover uh, some form of house, uh, maybe even trap music. Hard to say for sure, but it should be fun, regardless of whichever one we're covering. So stick around. Uh, subscribe if you want to follow the series. Uh, check out my channel if you want to see some of the other series I've done. I have a couple videos where I make full dubstep songs uh, in like, I don't know, a two-hour video. But uh, those ones, honestly, I wasn't quite as good when I made those as I am now. And I'm not saying that I'm super good now, but I am better than I used to be. Uh, some of my very, very old mastering and mixing tutorials on Logic and GarageBand, you got to take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, it's very exaggerated for the, for the sake of the tutorial, which I never said clearly, which I should have. Uh, anyways, bottom line is I've gotten a lot better at making tutorials, 
everything, all the information in these three videos that you've watched, assuming you've seen all the videos in the series to this point, uh, all of it is good information, I promise. So, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.